Hi there, it's Ryan G. Wright with DoHardMoney.com and today what we are going to talk about is negotiating tactics and techniques. Um, so negotiating obviously is part of this whole real estate investing game. Um, but the real question is, is how to effectively negotiate. You see, really what we want to understand is what the needs of the people we're working with. So if you're doing direct to seller and you're doing postcards or mailers or skip tracing and, and doing voice broadcasts or whatever the case is, um, one of the most important things is to understand their needs and what they want out of it. Because many times, what somebody's looking for isn't necessarily the most amount of money. If they were, they would put more money into the property and sell the property and sell it to a retail buyer and not have to sell it fast. See, we're, we're real estate problem solvers when it comes down to it. And we're helping solve somebody's problem. They may have a problem, for example, where they need money to put somebody into a rest home. I have a perfect, perfect example of this on a deal I did not too long ago uh, where the family was able, had to put grandpa into a rest home. Um, they had the money to get him in there, but the rest of his money was tied up in his house and Social Security wasn't going to cover all of it, so they had to sell his house. But the problem was his house was in really bad condition. It was held together with bailing wire and duct tape. And so what he had, what they had to do is get his house sold. But they needed the money right away because those places are super expensive and they needed it in a few weeks. And so their whole thing was, we need to sell the house. We know it's in bad condition, but all his equity is locked up in that house. What can you do for us? And so for us, that type of transaction was, we can just give you speed to get this done. It wasn't necessarily the most amount of money. If they wanted more money, they could have fixed the property up, sold it to a retail buyer. What they needed was speed and convenience. In addition to that, there was an estate uh, situation uh, that we needed to deal with. Um, so those are some types of things. Uh, that's the other thing that you can do when it comes to negotiations is be the expert. So if I can provide more value that somebody else wasn't able to provide, for, for example, if I have a um, estate attorney or if I have a probate attorney and I say, you know what, let me deal with the whole probate issue. You don't have to worry about a thing. I'll take care of it all. I'll have my attorney do that, but I'm going to buy the property for this price. I'll pay for the attorney up to a certain extent as long as there isn't crazy things that'll happen out of my pocket. And then what I've done is gone to the attorney and I've worked out a deal with the attorney where he gets paid upon the closing of the property, uh, not paid on an hourly fee so that I'm really not out any money until the closing actually occurs and then I can build that into my costs. But when we're doing this, it's really important the negotiation really begins with that initial phone call. And with that initial phone call, what I'm trying to do is build a relationship. Um, I want to build a relationship with the individual and I want to understand their real needs. And I'll tell you, they usually don't tell you at first. I call it peeling the onion. Um, the first layer of what they tell you really isn't the problem. And the second layer, it really isn't the problem. And the third layer isn't the problem. But once you start peeling a few more, you get down to that core real issue of what's going on with them and why it's an issue. And so you have to ask why, tell me about that. Um, so a lot, a lot of common techniques are is to find relationships, find common interests. Um, so that may be a sports team, that may be an instrument, that may be kids, that may be pets, that may be whatever the case is, but you're trying to relate to that individual relate to that couple or whoever is the seller of that property and try and find common interests. One of the great things about finding common interests is if you can relate something that you're really passionate about, and I'm not suggesting you do this um, in, in without integrity, I'm suggesting you do this for real, which is what is something you're really interested in and try and find something they're interested in. So uh, for example, I have some, some guys that I work with here that are sports fanatics, right? They love the Lakers. So if you walked in and you saw a Lakers sign, you could genuinely re relate to that and say, oh, I'm a Lakers fan too, I know this. Well, what about this? Well, now all of a sudden there's this history and all these things that had to do with this basketball team that you are both supporters of, you're now on the same side. You're on the same side of the table, not against each other in this type of negotiation. So that's one of the first things we talk about when we talk about uh, negotiating tactics. Um, the other thing is, is as you're walking through, um, as you get that phone call, um, and then later when you're walking through the property, um, you're building that relationship with them and you're talking about um, different aspects of their home. Now, if it's in a phone call type situation with an initial phone call, um, one of the tactics in negotiating is ask them lots of questions. Be on a fact-finding mission. Um, if they ask you how much you want to pay for the house, you want to deflect that question because you say, hey, 
we want to pay a fair price. What do you think that it's worth? Um, one of the negotiating techniques also is he who states a price first always loses. So you don't want to state a price. You want them to state a price. And as they state a price, the next technique we're going to talk about here is, is that the best you can do? Um, is that the best you can do? Um, and say, you'll, you'll want to continue asking that question. Well, what if we made a cash offer? Would that be the best you could do? What if we could close early? Is that the best you can do? You want to keep asking those questions. And what you're really doing is starting to bracket and say, hey, this is really what they're hoping for. Now, if you've used Investor's Edge software, then you have a really good idea as to what they owe on the property. And so if you know how much you can pay, you know how much they owe, and you know how much they're hoping to get out of it before you have ever stated a price, you're in a winning situation. In addition to that, you want to ask fact-finding questions about the property itself and understanding the property. Next technique we're going to talk about is first in or last in. Um, there's this whole idea of are you interviewing other people? Are you talking to other people to buy the property? If so, you may want to be the first person in saying, I want to be the first person you talk to with the idea that you're going to make something happen with them. Or you could say, I want to be the last person that you're going to talk to. Now, there's pros and cons with both of these. If you're first in, you're typically going to be able to do what you can to negotiate, but they may want to talk to other people before they accept your offer. If you're last in, they may have already accepted somebody else's offer before you even get the opportunity to meet with them. And this has to do with competitive situations, so you've got to make that distinction. My personal preference is to be first in. But that leads us to our next negotiating tactic, which is, if you are first in, you have to walk out with a contract. You've got to walk out with a contract. You've got to have a purchase contract. And that leads us to another negotiating tactic, which is, um, if it's a price that you're not sure if you can do or not, what you want to do is say, um, hey, I'm not sure if I can make this work, but let's go ahead and move forward at this price and give me a couple of weeks to get my contractors, partners, if partners, if you're going to wholesale it, you consider them a partner. And let me crunch the numbers. Let me get the pencil sharpened just a little bit more. And with that here in two weeks, I'll let you know if I can move forward or not. With integrity, you can say that and you can try and wholesale the deal or you can get your contractors out there and really know if you can get better on that price or not. If so, then you move forward. But if not, you can walk away from that transaction. This leads to another negotiating tactic, which is asking for seller financing. Because if you can't get to terms on the price, your next thing is to say, well, if I could pay that price, would you finance the property? Meaning, you become the bank and I'll make the payments to you. If you can do that at a 0% interest, where you don't even bring up the interest and just say, we'll just make equal payments of, of $1,000 a month until it's paid off, and that's roughly going to be 200 months if it's $200,000, then you're also, you can pay more for the property if you have a zero interest loan from the person that it's coming to. And if you're looking to wholesale or retail that property, that can be very beneficial as well. Um, so that's something else to keep in mind when we're talking about some of the negotiating techniques.